Okay, part two. So we're talking about where the speed, we're talking about the situation where we have, we're so lucky that we have a unit speed curve. That's where the speed is always equal to one, not just temporarily equal to one at some, some point or some few points, but always equal to one. So the speed I defined as the magnitude of the velocity, and that's the magnitude of the derivative position. That's how often you often get it from a parameterization. But I also observed that Another way to say it is that distance equals rate times time says that the rate, or the speed, is a little bit of distance divided by a little bit of time. This is a very standard formula from BC. And what does that mean if the speed is equal to 1? So if the speed is equal to 1, then ds is equal to dt. And so the integral of ds, which keeps track of how far you've gone at any given time, well, it doesn't have to be exactly equal to t, but they can only differ by a constant because they're both changing at the same rate. And uh, in fact, what I'm going to do here, if t happened to start equal at equal uh, t equals a, well, that's where s equals zero. That's the start of the curve. And so I, I don't have to put in some random plus c. I can actually put in t minus a. Okay. But the main thing is that they differ only by a constant. Okay. So that's really nice. And in fact, one thing I can do is it's not a big deal. Sometimes I don't want to, maybe, but it's really not hard to redefine t to start at 0. Once I've realized, hey, you know what? S is starting at 0 here. I kind of That's a really natural place to start your curve. And maybe it's not what came to me in my problem, but it's not that hard to just shift all your t values to do that. And in that case, s is just exactly equal to t. And this is wonderful. What it means is that if you've got this situation, it means your parameter has a very geometrical meaning. And it means your curve is parameterized by arc length. Let's think a minute about what that what that means by looking at a couple of examples. Okay, so one example where it is true is cosine t sine t. Okay, that go, it parameterizes the unit circle and it parameterizes it by arc length. If you start the curve right here at the usual place, t equals zero, that's where s equals zero. The cur the distance you've gone so far is zero because you're starting there. And then as you go around the curve, if this is, you know, t equals pi over 2, well, you've gone pi over 2 units at unit speed, and so s is pi over 2 as well. This is back to just sort of uh, s equals r theta for a circle. So here, t equals s equals pi. As you go around, you're exactly just keeping track of your progress by measuring the arc length. Well. That's wonderful because this parameter s has a meaning you can look at and, and in principle calculate without knowing anything about the parameterization. I, don't, I can just draw a circle here and I don't have to tell you how I'm parameterizing it. You can calculate whatever method that this length here is definitely a quarter of a circle of radius 1. That's definitely pi over 2. And so s is a geometric quantity. Let me just write that down. It has geometric meaning independent of the parameterization. Remember, there's, there's in general, going to be a lot of different parameterizations of the same geometric curve. And um, we're always interested in figuring out what are the quantities that really only have to do with the set of points, not how it's traversed by some particle or, or by some particular instructions for drawing it. Okay, T is generally not a geometric quantity. But if I happen to know that my t is equal to s, and I'm in other words, I'm parameterized by arc length, then, well, yeah, it's definitely going to be a geometric quantity. So a good example of that, a really simple example of that, is what about like cosine 2t, sine 2t? Let's figure out the speed for that. Well, this is r. v is now minus 2 sine 2t to cosine 2t. And so the magnitude of v 
easy calculation shows that it's 2. Now, this is different from putting a 2 in front, remember. That would be the circle of radius 2. This is still parameterizing the unit circle. But now it's going at speed 2. And uh, so I could, if I don't pay attention to that, I could very easily get incorrect results. For example, if I think, does the, the length equal 0 to 2 pi v magnitude of v dt, well, that would be 2 pi times that constant, which is 2. 4 pi, whoa, wait, that's not the, the circumference of, unit cir of the unit circle. Well, what's going wrong there is this guy. If I let this function run from 0 to 2 pi, 2t two, two is going to run to 4 pi. That would go twice around the unit circle. So I can still get the right answer from this formula. This, I'm not saying this formula is suddenly wrong. This formula is always right if you are careful about your parameterization. Here, t equals 0 to t equals pi gives you the whole circle. We see this even in trig precal, where um, we, we start solving trig equations involving sine of 2t, cosine of 2t, and it can get very tricky in terms of saying, oh, wait, uh, it's going twice around the circle. It's going halfway around the circle. Okay. So here, just 0 to, to pi is the whole circle. So the length would be 0 to pi magnitude of e dt, 0 to pi 2 dt, and that's twice of that length of that interval is 2 pi. Okay. So, here's something where it's not parameterized by arc length. And so, the labels, the t labels on this circle are uh, rather misleading if you think that they're geometric. Here's t equals 0. Here's t equals pi over 4. Because when t equals pi over 4, that the cosine 2t and sine 2t are all, already, all the way up here. Here's t equals pi over 2. Here's t equals... 3 pi over 4, and again, you only need 0 to pi to get all the way around the circle. So if you read those, if I didn't take the, if I took the t equals away, and I showed this to somebody who's like studying trig precal right now, they get very confused, or they just say, Dr. Metzl, you're um, on some sort of substance because uh, this is this is not right. Those aren't the right labels. But they are the right labels for time, they're just not the right labels for distance. So that's showing how nice it is um, to have the unit speed parameterization, because t really is measuring something that's really physically interesting. It's the length so far. Now, what we'll return to is the question of, suppose somebody gives me something like this. Here, it's pretty easy to fix. I can just say, you know, can I just change the variable and just package up that 2t and turn it back into this nice example? But what if I have something more complicated? Is it possible to turn it into something that's parameterized by arc length, that has unit speed? And in general, it's really hard. Um, in terms of just the, the, the fuzzy calculations, but it's, it's a good, be a good idea to introduce the idea, but we'll, we'll do that later. What I want to do um, before that is to talk about um, another thing that, that's, really si that's relatively simple for unit speed curves and is more complicated for other ones. Let me, let me go ahead and stop here and do an, another video.